can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Now right. the floor is yours. I'll Thank see you, you later. Much. Thank you. And hello to all of the delegates uh, from Australia. It's, um, it's a great privilege to be here and I'd like to thank um, the program organizers for creating this platform and inviting me to speak and introduce you to Accord and some of our key priorities, particularly as those that primarily impact cosmetic and personal care products, manufacturing and packaging. So um, the next slide, please. Thanks. Um, so what shall I cover today? What I'd like to address is who are we? What do we do? And also an overview of key issues impacting manufacturing and packaging, as I mentioned. But I'd like to focus specifically on plastic packaging waste management and the new regulatory requirements in Australia. So if we can go to the next slide. So who are we? Accord is the peak body representing the hygiene, personal care and specialty products industry in Australia. So we represent soaps, detergents, disinfectants, cosmetics, um, regardless of the supply chain, whether that be business to business, fast moving consumer goods or prestige. And this is a list of our consumer cosmetic and personal care members. I'm sure that many of you actually work for them, but certainly recognise them. Next slide, please, Steph. So what does Accord do? As the industry association, uh, we're the national voice for hygiene, personal care and specialty products. We provide indis indispensable membership services and with, with very strong values as an industry association. Our member companies are at the heart of everything that we do. And I'd like to, um, our strategic framework you can see before you is really around member value, advocacy and industry growth. So I'd like to uh, speak to each of those in a little depth. So next slide, please, Steph. So our member value strategy. This is about Accord being a responsive and respective team of experts delivering indispensable services and knowledge across the breadth of the membership focused on stewardship initiatives to maximize sustainability and innovation. For example, our COVID response of profiling and advocacy to meet members changing needs on critical issues and information during the pandemic. Members navigation and access to government across all, all layers of the Australian system. And we offer exclusive to member information offerings, frequently asked questions and bespoke training orders, uh, uh, sorry, bespoke training courses. Also, as I mentioned, expert advice at the end of the phone and sector specific roundtables and networking for our companies. So next slide, Steph. Our advocacy strategy. So this is where Accord is a trusted and influential partner for companies visibly communicating in all relevant fora and engaged through all relevant stakeholders, reinforcing the essential role of industry's products they play in, the, in public health, personal wellbeing and quality of life. For example, this includes our political engagement, our proactive and re reactive ingredient defence and issues management, our local and global cosmetic personal care counterpart networking. For example, we're a member of the ASEAN Cosmetic Association and Accord currently hosts the Global Collaboration Forum for the global cosmetic and personal care industry. But for the focus of this presentation, I would like to dwell on plastics, packaging, waste strategy and policy development as relevant to this particular topic. Next slide. Before I go into that, though, I would like to just highlight some of our uh, sustainability initiatives. Now, all of these are accessible via our website. There's Sunsible, which is a, a brand neutral evidence based website that provides advice 
on how to effectively use sunscreens. There's Spurfies. It's a, a website that addresses unfounded public alarm, the myths and misconceptions on the internet about um, our industry's products. And I'd also particularly like to flag Look Good, Feel Better, an initiative that the Australian cosmetics industry, free community service program dedicated to improving the well-being and confidence of people undergoing cancer treatment. Look Good, Feel Better is, is a global charity and we're very privileged to, to be involved with the local arm. I'd also like to flag Bead Recede. So this is of particular relevance to the topic uh, today because it um, addresses the, it's a, uh, it's a reduction, it's an, I beg your pardon, it's the industry-led voluntary phase-out of microbeads in Australia. And again, as I mentioned, all of these are accessible with more detail on our, on our website. Next slide, please, Steph. So and these are some of the other initiatives that we have, probably some more relevant to the hygiene sector as opposed to personal care and cosmetic. Although White Smart is also a very um, relevant topic for sustainability. Next slide. So now if I turn to the second arm of our strategy, our advocacy strategy, specifically in relation to the plastic and packaging waste strategy and policy development. I've got on the slide the national targets for Australia. So the Australian national targets in packaging uh, for 2025, 100% reusable, recyclable or compostable packaging, 70% of plastic packaging being recycled or composted, 50% average recycled content included in packaging, and the phase out of problematic and unnecessary single-use plastic packaging is in the development phase. You can see that the results of the 2019-20 year on the screen. Next slide. The second element um, for the plastic and packaging waste strategy and policy development for Australia is the Australasian Recycling Labelling Program. It's an on-pack labelling scheme to assist consumers to recycle correctly, supporting brand owners and packaging manufacturers to design packaging that is recyclable at end of life. And I've provided a link there so that you can provide, uh, find out more information about the ARL program. But essentially the program features two key elements. The Packaging Recyclability Evaluation Portal it's an online tool that assesses packaging recyclability in the context of the Australian and New Zealand curbside and approved drop-off recycling systems. And the Australasian recycling label itself, an on-pack label that provides clear and simple instructions about how to recycle all of the separable packaging components. Now, the Australian government, in addition to the uh, national targets, has committed to working with industry to see that the Australian, the Australasian recycling label, the ARL, is displayed on 80% of supermarket products by 2023. Next slide, please. So the third element of the plastics and packaging waste strategy and policy framework for Australia is the Australian Packaging Covenant. It's a national regulatory framework under the National Environmental Protection or Used Packaging Materials Measure from 2011. And it sets out how governments and businesses across Australia share the responsibility for managing the environmental impacts of packaging. So you can learn more about that through the link that I've provided as well. APCO is actively working with governments, businesses and other organisations from across Australia. It, it's particularly important because of the large and complex packaging value chain to develop, they're really looking to develop insights and resources and programs that are needed to build a sustainable national packaging ecosystem. And that is to deliver Australia's 2025 national packaging targets. 
importantly, I flagged some recent developments that you might find valuable to refer to when you're considering the application of these policy frameworks to your products that are marketed uh, in Australia. And that's the independent review into the framework that was recently tabled in Parliament and the Prime Minister's, the Australian Prime Minister's recent announcements on the 21st of March 2022 with regard recyclability. So next slide. So that's the government uh, policy framework, if you like. Now, what have been Accord's activities in this area? Accord is working on an industry-wide basis to facilitate companies responding to these current goals of government, working closely with government and the relevant ministers and departments, also working with APCO. We are a member of APCO, but working closely with them on issues relevant to our sector. We're also working with design and supply chain participants, including retailers, and also many others that are offering packaging options collection and stewardship programs. For example, the grant recipient, Close the Loop, they are looking specifically into some of the plastic and packaging waste recovery options for the cosmetic and personal care products in Australia. Now, I've given you another link from the Accord website there too, which is our previous achievements and information details. This might be a valuable resource for you to reference as well. Next slide, please. So if then we look at Accord's activities and our priority issues at the moment. And that's really tackling the APCO requirements and associated industry issues based on feedback from our members. We're also promoting the success of the feed received, which was the voluntary industry microfeed phase out that I mentioned earlier. And if any state legislation is envisaged by, within Australia, it needs to be nationally consistent and aligned with this existing industry approach. We're also looking at consideration of potential take back schemes, container reuse, appropriate use of the Australian recycling label or the pos and possible alternatives and useful case studies. For example, I've given you a link to sustainable salons, which would be interesting depending on your supply chain of your products. We're working on a strategic policy discussion paper utilising the results of member company surveys that were conducted in 2021. And this is about the progress of the collective industry and our key asks of government. We're also monitoring and engaging on international developments where necessary with treaties and the European developments on microplastics. Next slide, please, Steph. Unfortunately, that's all I have time for in terms of the packaging and plastics waste policy, but I'm very happy to take questions either at the end of this session if we have time or indeed further down the track. Um, but let me turn now to the third arm of Accord's strategic framework. This is the industry growth strategy. Accord, uh, as a well-connected and credible industry voice, facilitating economic growth and employment by supporting global regulatory convergence based very much on sound science, a commitment to regulatory best practice and no barriers to trade. What I'd like to focus on at this presentation are some key issues um, for Australia, and that includes the relatively recent implementation of ACUS, new legislation for industrial chemicals, and the details and implementation of the new very new industrial chemicals environmental management standard. These are very relevant to the cosmetic and industrial and personal care products. I've also listed here other regulators for your reference that have a potential impact on manufacturing and packaging requirements within Australia. The Australian Consumer and Competition Commission, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, Standards Australia, Biosecurity Rules, for imports, 
Transport Controls, the National Measurement Institute for Labelling and Modern Slavery. Thanks, Steph. Um, so, in Australia, the Australian regulatory system is very complex and unique compared to other ASEAN economies. Now, I haven't got time today to go through all of the distinctions and all of the elements of the regulatory system in Australia. But what I'd like to do is focus on the, the um, Australian Industrial Chemical Chemicals Introductory Scheme, or ACRES. Now, the majority of cosmetic and personal care ingredients are regulated as industrial chemicals. It doesn't necessarily always sound relevant to our sector, but the majority of these ingredients are regulated by ACUS. Now, this is this is the new regulator that has replaced the former NICNAS. Now, that doesn't include those products in Australia that are often regulated as therapeutic goods. And these the examples of that include some sunscreens, some hand sanitizers, some oral care preparations. And as I said, I don't have time today to go into all of those distinctions. So I really want to focus on ACUS as a relatively new regulatory system. Steph, so ACUS, this, as I mentioned, is a new regulation and some of the requirements are still in transition. The legislation commenced on the 1st of July in 2020. Until 31st of August 2022, it is in transition. And that's for exemptions under the old rules. They have until the 31st of August to comply. Next slide. So let me just give you an outline of ACUS and its structure. There's a listed category, and that means that the chemical is already on the industrial chemicals inventory. It can be introduced if it's within the terms of the in industry list, um, inventory listing. Then there's an exempted category. This is for very low risk introductions. Then there's a reported category, and this is for low risk introductions as opposed to the exempted category which is very low risk. So we have exempted very low risk, we have reported low risk and then we have the assessed category that's a medium to high risk introduction. We also have commercial evaluation authorization um, which if you're interested in that we can go into that further but the assessed category uh, you apply for an assessment or medium to high risk introductions and that assessment certificate needs to be uh, with you before you introduce the chemical. So step, next slide please. Um, so there are different, for the assessed introductions, there are different fees for each type um, of assessment and so you can see those there and those fees, fees are the current ones that are, are applicable. Next slide. Just going through a few more distinctions in relation to the reported category and the exempt category and through the reporting declarations and record keeping requirements. For the reported category, you have a pre-introduction reporting, which is completed before introduction through the ACUS portal and there are variable data requirements to be held by the introducer. The exempted category, rather than a pre, you have a post-introduction declaration, which needs to be completed before the 30th of November in the introduction year. It's a one-off reporting through the ACUS business portal as well. And there, importantly, more data needs to be held by the introducer for this category to meet the categorisation requirements. Next slide. ACUS registration and annual declaration, both registration and an annual declaration are mandatory for every in introducer. Now let me just stress, an introducer for the purposes of the Australian system is whether you're importing ingredients, for example, manufacturing 
from manufacturing in Australia, or whether you were importing fully finished cosmetic and personal care products, you are an introducer and therefore you need to go through the categorisation process. There's a registration, um, a registration which is a fee paid based on turnover. The calculation has based on the previous year's turnover. It's not prorated. It starts from the date that you register and expires each year on the 31st of August. You also have annual declaration requirements. Now this is a declaration to confirm that your industrial chemicals are authorised under the Industrial Chemicals Act. So the annual declaration covers the ACUS registration year from 1 September to the 31st of August. It's due on the 30th of November each year and it's lodged also by the ACUS business portal. When the ACUS legislation was introduced, it also brought with it animal, an animal testing ban for cosmetics. And when the end use of that chemical is in cosmetic use only, you must not use new animal test data on your chemical to support your categorisation or certificate application process. And there are limited circumstances that might um, be exceptions. It also brought clarification in relation to non-cosmetic uh, non only end uses as well as cosmetic and non-cosmetic combined end uses. In relation to the animal test ban, just go to the next slide. Accord introduced the Voluntary Industry Code of Practice to support the Australian ban on testing cosmetics on animals. So the code um, aims to guide consistency but provide clarity regarding not tested on animals, the terms and indeed the advertising claims that is used by the cosmetic industry in this area. So the code was developed by Accord for the cosmetic industry in consultation with the Australian Department of Health and other key stakeholders, including animal welfare groups like the RSPCA Australia. And you can see some elements um, of the code through the quick links there. But again, the code is available via our website um, and you can find all of the details readily available to support uh, this important initiative. Thanks, Steph. So industry growth strategy. I want to go further now from um, some of the key regulatory issues that Accord has been dealing with. Obviously, the implementation of the ACUS system. We continue to roll out multi-level engagement strategies to progress members' identified priority improvements to the system, including um, a downloadable inventory, which is now available, the nomenclature to be used, fragrance introductions, and the associated record keeping requirements. We've also developed industry guidance materials and training to assist compliance. Now, I mentioned some of the other regulators that are involved in the regulatory system of Australia for the cosmetic and personal care products. That includes the ACCC and the TGA, and we have issues and agendas for each of those regulators and each of those areas of uh, legislation. Within the TGA, it also includes chemical scheduling. And this is the risk-based requirement for, in, for ingredients in products, including personal care and cosmetic products, and really specifies, stipulates bans, uh, concentration limits, packaging, and even labelling requirements. So those are all on the Accord agenda for work to improve the system. I'd now like to touch on the details and implementation timetable of the new Industrial Chemicals Environmental Management Standard. And on the former slide, I've actually given you a link to more details that you can source for yourself on the government uh, website. But most recently, the consultation of the draft principles, the new legislative instrument that provides the decision-making net framework for the Minister, 
was published by the Department of Agriculture, Water and Environment on the 23rd of March this year and is open for consultation at the moment for two months. Also on that day, the department published a roadmap on the implementation and with a commitment for an ongoing consultation for each step of the implementation. So the time frame provided by the department um, follows. So in 2022, you can see that the Commonwealth will start scheduling industrial chemicals. Now, again, I stress, that for the purposes of Australian regulation, industrial chemicals includes cosmetic and personal care ingredients. Also in 2022, the states and territories will release plans for uh, their implementation of the scheduling, and they will also incorporate um, the register into the regulatory frameworks. On the website as part of the consultation program, the department has identified 2022 and 2023 priorities for specific ingredients. And they'll consult with stakeholders on, on an ongoing basis um, on the scheduling priorities beyond 2023. Next slide. So I know that we've run through an awful lot of detail about Accord, who we are, what we do, and focused on two key areas that potentially significantly impact packaging and manufacturing of cosmetic and personal care products in Australia. I hope you find the materials useful, and no doubt you'll have a lot of questions as you digest the information and, and then apply it to your products. So please don't hesitate to reach out to Accord. Our email uh, details are there. You can either email myself um, at Accord or also Steph, who's been ably helping me sharing the, the slides as our manager for member and stakeholder communication. Also, uh, you can email the organisers or put the questions in the chat. But I'm just very mindful that we've virtually run out of time and I know that there are um, a lot of speakers be, um, to follow me and I don't want to take away from their time. So I'd like to thank you very much for this opportunity, very much for your attention during the presentation and I look forward to hearing from you after um, the event and we can continue to engage and uh, answer your questions. Thank you. Hello, Ms. Bronwyn. Hello, thank you for the topic about discuss Australian regulatory and sustainability issues for cosmetic and personal care products. And um, delegates, please prepare your questions to Ms. Cabana and you can type in in the chat box. And don't forget, we have a Lazada voucher winning activity today. So Ms. Uh, Ms. Bronwyn, um, maybe due to the time limitation, we can still answer one question. Uh, yes, okay. Um, or, uh, there's two quick ones. Um, can anyone can anyone join a cord? Um, companies can join a cord, not individuals. So companies involved in all aspects of cosmetic and personal care manufacturing and packaging in Australia are eligible, as well as those companies that are importing fully um, in fully finished products into Australia, into the Australian market. Um, maybe one more, if of we course. have time, is that okay, Jay? So what are three considerations companies should have with regard to packaging of products supplied in Australia, noting the 2025 national packaging target? Well, this is um, a very good question and one that probably needs a, a great deal of, of thought and, and response. But I suppose off the top of my head, um, I would say one, you need to consider the regulatory requirements that are specific to your products in Australia, uh, because as I mentioned, we have a very different system um, than in other ASEAN countries. 
Two, I'd consider the goals of um, the 2025 national packaging target, the individual goals, and how the design of your packaging uh, can be improved accordingly. Um, and then perhaps thirdly, what you do need to consider as well as all of those elements, the context of your specific supply chain and the opportunities to recover packaging um, or indeed uh, mechanisms to, to improve um, and, and lessen the environmental impact. So, for example, if you're an online provider or a salon provider or via pharmacy or department stores or, or even in, in supermarkets. So I hope that's off the top of my head a sufficient answer, but I'm more than happy to take further questions when, when we have some more time. Of course, Ms. Bronwyn, I promise that I will share the last slide of your of yours, the contact information, and not only showing that, and I will copy them and paste in the chat box too. I'll uh, give them the more chance to have the further discussion with you, and um, Bronwyn and Stephanie. And for the very, very last, I would like to ask you kindly to do a little favor. Please choose one of the best questions of today in the Q&A list, and I'll announce to delegates that these people will win our Lavada voucher. Okay, I'll come back to you. I need the time to check them all, so I will let you know after. So please, if there are any others after the event, I'm happy to include those in the in the lucky winners. <laughs> of course, thank you very much. And for the very last, would you like to make a highlight or conclusion to delegates before you say goodbye to them? No, I, I don't want to take away from the time of the next presenters, Jack. Thank you very much again for your attention and also for the platform for and, and the invitation to present today. Thank you, Ms. Rowan. I'm looking forward to seeing you again in our future events. Bye-bye. Thank you.